Hello, good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank all the governing bodies and the members of the AIC as well as Coffee Board who has given me an opportunity to share my journey with them. Plus, uh, all the members who are attending this session to enlighten some more facts about how the coffee industry will be growing in tier two and three cities. So I would like to start my session with some of the stories that I have went through which will boost the morale of the people who are living in tier two and three cities. So India, as we see, is still now more focused on a tea drinking country as we go in tier two and three cities and maybe as we categorize it into tier four cities. In 2016, I started my coffee journey. In 2016, uh, India was just witnessing the arrival of Starbucks. It was cafe coffee day. So one of the people I really follow and I would like to introduce that earlier coffee was more like a commodity, you know, the instant coffee thing. So Siddhartha has introduced cafe coffee day and I myself as a youngster went to these cafes thinking about that all the rich people, all the successful people sit in particular cafes and sip their coffee and discuss. So it fantasizes me. And we have all grown to like, to be very honest, when I used to go CCD, I used to opt only for the espresso part because it was the cheapest on the menu. So maybe most of us have gone through that phase just to uh, be one of the wannabe that want to taste coffee and show off to the community. So after 2016, it has grown tremendously, but as we are, the topic is unlocking the tier two and three cities for the coffee industry future. What I see that me as a person, when I say personally in 2016, I was first introduced to the coffee around that period. And when I was first went CCT, I was very fantasized with the concept that yes, it is cool. In 2017, I met a person 2017 and I drank a cup of espresso and then an Americano. And the first thing I asked that it tasted very differently. He said, yeah, it is a specialty coffee. It is Indian specialty coffee. So I said, I was so much naive that time that I was unaware that what particular a specialty coffee was coined for. So I asked that what is so special about this coffee? So he said, no, it is Indian specialty coffee. So I again asked that I understand it is a very good coffee, but what's so special about this coffee? So he said to me that uh, you are unaware of the fact that there are commercial coffee and specialty coffee. Manika, yes, I am unaware of that fact. So he said, just Google it and find it. That time internet was so much not into everyone's hand that it was easy to Google everything. And that person was Matt Chitranjan, founder and CEO of Blue Tokai. So why I'm starting this fact that as a person from a tier two and three city, if you have a passion, if you are dedicated to something, then you will achieve it definitely. And coffee, coffee in particular is a community driven business. So this is the story. I am enlightening you with uh, my own story so that you get an idea that from where we have started and where we have reached. So somebody can sh start with the PPT part. So uh, after this introduction, we can just go to the pointers and uh, share everything. Yeah, uh, Faiz, I have not received uh, the file. Okay, I will send it from my side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it visible? Yeah. The presentation is not visible. Uh, we are able to see the window where we have opened the download section. Okay, just a second.
Yeah, now it is visible. So now the first thing which I want to share that um, as we are discussing today, that how the opportunities and the potential of the co uh, coffee industry will be in the tier two and cities. As I have shared earlier you with my story myself, that Indian coffee, particularly if we talk about the whole scenario, people just know about the instant coffee, the coffee they serve in cafe coffee days, Starbucks and what they hear. So the biggest opportunity and the potential in tier two and three city is itself the awareness. And when I say awareness, uh, awareness, it means that people yet have a time to learn about the Indian specialty coffee. What is the difference between the commercial coffee? What is the difference between an instant coffee and what we drink in the coffee culture? So the thing is, that I always believe that disruption, unawareness and something that people, uh, it is a market yet to be tapped. The biggest opportunity for coffee industry is the tier two and three cities because it is a market which is untapped till date. If you go to a small cafe and everything, so there is a huge potential that somebody can open a cafe, then somebody can make people learn that this is the particular difference between an instant coffee and the freshly brewed coffee. So the highlights of the webinar, as I've said, that it is for tier two and three, uh, three cities can become the pivotal hub for the coffee industrial growth. Because like if you go to Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, even Surat in Gujarat, so people are very much aware of what uh, they are drinking, what is the source, what is the coffee state. If I say in the city of where I am resided and I am operating, that is Jodhpur. So it is just a vague idea of Indian specialty coffee and people are more into like Jamaican coffee, Brazilian coffee. So it is a general Indian habit that if you say that something is imported, so people say, yeah, it is just wow. They don't get to know about the coffee taste. They don't get to know that what is the hard work, the farmers, the boards, the people behind that are growing the coffee and making them reach to the cafe are doing. So learning the strategy is that how you should uh, story tell about the Indian coffee heritage and the coffee because as we know, it is not a very old thing that has come to in India. Before CCD, nobody knows that there was a freshly brewed coffee. And after that, Blue Tokai was the first one to introduce that, you know, whole idea of Indian specialty coffee and make that accessible to the drinking. And because of the help of so many bodies, like what we are uh, presently witnessing, the AIC, the coffee board, it is now becoming very helpful for the people to deliver the value what the farmers are growing. Earlier, it is more the exported thing and only a tier one or metro city stories. So this is a small pointers which I want to discuss that are in a country having as a fair with tea, coffee swept in slowly becoming the new most loved beverage. India is believed to be the sixth largest coffee producer of the world. But surprisingly, very few amount of that coffee which is exported and which is, which is globally produced is consumed in India. The biggest thing which I believe that when a farmer is growing a coffee beans, uh, so he is putting a lot of effort, lot of work. So most of the people don't know that it is not just the average crop that he is growing. It is growing something very valuable on the global market. Like I, uh, uh, I may be wrong on this part or because this is the thing I am not witnessed, but I, this is more of the thing that I've heard from internet and through. Uh, people that many of the Indian coffee stores have won many awards globally. I think Praveen will be the right person who can uh, uh, give surety on this that many of the Indian coffee stores are winning awards globally on different coffee platforms. Now there are many people who are winning Aeropress Barista Championship from India globally acclaimed and uh, even we are uh, giving some of the coffee bees which are growing in Chikmangalur area to the uh, our French clients and clients in US. So we have to work on this value that our coffee, what we are producing, what we are working on is going, doing very good uh, in the Konojor market, but yet it has to get its value in tier two and three cities. And particularly in tier one city as well right now, because 
I can see that there is a huge gap and there is a huge potential because one of, like there are many cafes which are coming, many brands which are taking their birth in tier two, three cities. For example, if I talk about Rajasthan, so Rajasthan in Jaipur in particular and in Jodhpur, there are many coffee uh, chains which are coming, which are uh, opening like every uh, one cafe to, in a two month period. So that is a whole uh, huge potential in the future. Like coffee production is estimated to be 342,000 metric tons for the fiscal year 2021. And um, it is a huge amount. This is the most in interesting part, which I want to uh, enlighten um, with all the listeners. Those who want to jump into this industry, those who want to work in this industry, those who are not just coffee lovers, who just want to put some value. I believe coffee industry is a community driven industry. First work as a barista, then I have uh, worked as a operational uh, head for the coffee chain. I started my own coffee roastery. So I believe that coffee industry is a very beautiful industry. It is a community driven industry. For example, uh, if I want to start my work from a roastery part, so I have to give value to the farmers, to the logistic, to the boards who are working so hard to rate the coffee, select the coffee, to the people who will purchase from me as of my vendors, to train the people who are brewing my coffee, to educate the barista that what is the history, what is the chain behind the coffee they are serving to the customer. And at the end, I also have to give value to the end consumer who is paying a particular amount of money for my coffee. So coffee industry is not something which is very easy. It is a passion. It is a community driven industry. Whenever somebody comes to me that he or she wants to open a cafe, he or she wants to open something related to coffee. I always advise them that it is a community driven industry. It is not, not something which is very easy. Many times it is not something which is very rewarding and it is driven by passion. If you want to invest your lifetime growing, brewing, serving something good, something valuable in which you value every stage of your operational chain, then only come into this industry because it is a very happy industry. I believe that for example, if all we are listening today, we are a coffee lovers. We want to learn more to, more about the how the coffee cherry is been plucked, how it is been selected, how it is it has been processed, it is washed, it is uh, fermented, it is honey sun dried, what all it is. But again, when it comes to the end consumer, we have to work on every vertical. That from the farmer side, how we can strengthen the farming community, how we can strengthen the roastery, how we can educate the cafes how we can give more employment to the barista, what are the skill and the skill development work we can do so that they can get more pay for the work they are doing and they are delivering to the customer. So this is what I believe that we have to work more on. We have to work and enlighten more in tier two and three city. For example, I would say that if I see Jodhpur where I am working, so now people are coming for Indian specialty coffee. Now people are asking that what are the coffee beans are you, you are using from which area you are sourcing. If I say that I source my coffee beans from Chikmangalu. So they are more interested in what are the coffee farms from which I am procuring. What are the stories? For example, if they Google it, so there will be a woman who is plucking the cherry and uh, putting it, then they are harvesting it. So now if I ask a particular amount of uh, money for my coffee, so they are eager to pay that because they know that how hard work the farmers are doing, how hard work the board is doing, how hard work the roasters are doing to give that particular taste in your cup of coffee. So that is the untapped market. That is, I think that when we tell the story, when we educate the people in tier two and three cities, they will help us to grow this business. They will help us to grow this industry because in many cities, it is, it is just a FOMO factor. People are not aware of what they are drinking, if, but if you if you are capable of telling them, so it is not just the part that you will be strengthening. 
it will also be very helpful to the whole industry as well there will be more opportunities more employment in our sector now these are some of the opportunities of the market of cafes and coffee shops which i have seen in last uh, 5 to 7 years uh cafes in particular if i say has become a trendy hangout spot for the youth uh as 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 i can see that people go to bangalore for their studies and delhi and to other metro cities and when they come back to the home towns so they got a part of their life that they want to go to the cafe for the meetings they want to go to the cafes for the hangout they want for example earlier we used to uh, hang out on tea stalls and everything but now the next generation want something very trendy something very soothing they want to uh, take their macbook and work uh, in some of the cafes sipping a cup of coffee so that is a great opportunity that you are getting a good customer base in tier 2 and 3 cities then the part is growing fascination with coffee uh i just want to add this point that uh, even not only the espresso the cappuccinos and the lattes but the the new fascination for the coffee in tier 2 and 3 cities is the manual brewing equipment like pour overs and aeropress so that fascination has boosted up the morale for the coffee roasters as well as the coffee producers now the cafes and the coffee shops have become a fashionable social hubs it's not just that people are just going for the coffee the, there are two cultures which are growing in the tier 2 and 3 cities one is the coffee culture and other is the cafe culture coffee culture is particularly for the people like us who are going into a particular cafe or a coffee shop just for the coffee but the cafe culture is something that just they just want a place for the uh, for uh sitting for 2 3 hours working gossiping with your friend but again the majority of the part is still in tier 2 and 3 cities is related to the cafe culture also they are not the connoisseur part but they are very helpful to boost this industry directly or indirectly then the show of value as i said that when i started my journey in before 2016 i used to go ccd because it was in my it was a mindset uh, in me that only successful business people only elite corporates everyone used to sit down there and have their coffee have their laptops open talk and communicate and network so cafes in tier 2 and 3 cities is more or less have become a show off and post covid we got a great opportunity from Uh, of the work from home culture like post covid as you must be aware that most of the companies have started this thing that work from home culture so now people are not used to sit down at home uh, and do their work because it is a very informal part so what they are doing they are going to some of the cafes like i also do for all my marketing and branding stuff i used to sit sun, uh, sit down in some of the cafe have a sip of coffee and think about it particularly these all type of shops not only give opportunity to the youngster to the new budding entrepreneurs but also help uh, many coffee shop owners many coffee outlets small dopio cafes bakery bakery in which you have a coffee setup to grow now why the next coffee wave is expected to be in tier 2 and 3 cities of india one of the thing i would like to share that when you go to tier 1 and uh, metro cities the market is already very saturated so i uh, so it is more of a competition thing and for example there is lesser scope of innovation as compared to tier 2 and 3 cities when you come to a city like jodhpur or a small town so you can do a very good innovation part you can try something new you can try with the recipes you can try various coffees and you nobody will be judgmental to you because you have to tell your own story so you can do various experimentation there with a less probability of failure and one of the fa- biggest factor of coffee wave which is expected to tear through three cities is the premier premiation wave that sweeps in indian small town and everybody want to be an entrepreneur everyone to be everyone to be have a successful career a premium thing so that has boosted and that have supported our industry very well now 
the story of baba budangiri hills as i have started my journey from 2016 and i have witnessed myself that how the how your customer has changed how your end consumer has changed earlier it only used to be that somebody want to have a cold coffee somebody want to have a hot coffee now people are more familiar with how the coffee beans was introduced to india how the things has changed how the commercial coffee has been shifted to the indian specialty coffee and what is the value of the indian specialty coffee or all our community on the global map so now that is the thing that can give you more value when you are working in this industry with huge gap come great opportunities so when you are going for example if i visit delhi so there will be a whole customer base of home brewers there will be a whole new customer base of cafes for ccd for starbucks for brew to guy so i believe that in coffee industry there is a market for everyone when it comes to smaller towns and cities so it is a new trend it is a new thing still if i say in jodhpur in jodhpur or in most of the part of rajasthan when i started my roastery part so most of the people was questioning my idea that why is there any huge consumption is rajasthan is the state where you should open a coffee roastery because i don't think that uh, there is an opportunity in that particular state but when i opened i was very overwhelmed by the response i was very much glad happy about the fact that i am able to educate the people about the indian coffee history indian specialty coffee how the coffee farmers are growing coffee and various bodies that are working really hard to boost this business and when i uh, uh, educate people about the factors the history of the coffee the quality of the coffee what is the aroma what is the taste what are the flavor notes that you can get on different coffees they get really shocked about that we never we were unaware of that fact that coffee tastes so well coffee tastes so good if you brew the coffee on different manual brewing equipment it will taste good so that is the untap at the blue ocean market where we can pitch where you can see that the most of the indian coffee that is grown in india will be consumed within the country within the small towns within the uh, our cities and that can have a huge different industry for new generation for new entrepreneurs who can work in different verticals not only cafes coffee shops and roasters but they can also become the innovating partners in the farming thing because again coffee is not something that you can grow anywhere coffee is not something that can be very easy to work on so for new gen- for new entrepreneurs who want to jump into this industry so i'm i'm sure that there will be something that you can work with different government bodies like coffee board and something because for example there is a person uh, i met in board coffee conference so he is just producing a yeast which will be very helpful to ferment the coffee the washed coffee so you can you can you can be innovative on the cafe side on the brewing equipment side on the espresso machine but you can also be innovative on the farming side how you can assist the farmers in growing better yield how you can assist the farmers in getting more uh, production and more healthy crops how you can uh, make them helpful with some of the manuals in which uh, it will be pest uh, you know pest controlling and everything so there is a huge opportunity not only the end consumer side but from the farmer side i always say that it is a community driven so you have to work from the farming to the end thing so it is a huge market huge market and market for everyone if we able to uh, convert our passion and see that in which vertical we can work on and obviously we uh, we can help each other so these are some of the things that i have noticed in uh, like last uh, few years that the specialty coffee roasters who are only working with the indian coffee farmers to boost their value than manual brewing bars manual brewing bars and home brewers 
and experience center one of the thing that uh, even we are working on is the experience centers and the training centers like one of the, uh, like with the growing opportunity in the tier 2 and 3 city there are so many cafe chains there are uh, many so many coffee shop there are coffee roasters that are coming but one of the thing we have to work on is the skill and and employment centers experience centers in which people will have to get trained for example i have to if i have to work in a coffee industry i want to work as a barista and i want to work as a you know roaster there has to be more accessible options for someone like i am very glad that aic and coffee board has just launched some of the programs uh, to boost the employment and many people are from rajasthan i am also sharing that the many people are from rajasthan are eager to go there to learn about the coffee because it is a very hard thing for example i i started my journey in 2016 but it took me 7 to 8 years to come to this platform where i can roast i can brew i can train i can tell about what are the different um, coffee beans are there coffee varieties are there coffee qualities are there so it is a uh, very long journey but uh, it is a great opportunity for the people who are listening who are attending this session so can i can also tell them that you have to be very updated because now the government bodies are very aggressively working to boost that market because it is a journey of 10 years which you have to cope up to so 10 years which is the next wave which will be coming to india is a great opportunity for everyone and you should enroll more and more courses to get better and better in this field it is an artisanal factor that when for example if i say that when you do an instant coffee and when you an order a coffee in some coffee shop or something so you love everything the taste of the coffee how it is served in which glasses it is served what is the latte art which is on the surface of your latte so that is the whole experience thing. like uh, i have seen that they have launched few courses so it took me many years i traveled a lot of cities to learn that thing but they, it is a great opportunity for the new coffee preneurs as i say that they can jump directly into this industry they can select the right people uh, whom they want to work on and then they can put more value they can grow at a faster and a rapid pace one of the things which is very trendy now basically in the region of rajasthan and gujarat are the dope cafes so uh, people are having small shops small uh, spaces in the offices and everything so they are working to serve good coffee and make it accessible to the corporates now as i said earlier and we have discussed that innovation in brewing equipment and accessories when i say that if somebody want to enter this community this industry most of the people just think about the cafe part the coffee shop part or the home brewing sector but other than that there are many things that you can work on like accessing to farmers innovations in brewing equipment training centers mentorship uh, ready to drink coffees so there is a huge thing then cost effective production of good quality ready to drink coffee beverage is one of the new things you can see that in the market there are many brands which have launched their ready to drink cold brews ice latter than everything in the supermarkets and places like that the india has a huge market for home brewing espresso machines coffee capsules and coffee concoction so these are all of the area for growth for coffee startups now again coming to the top so there are some opportunities and with this, with that opportunities like there are many gaps that we have to work on when i uh, i want to share that when we started this program and when we selected this topic unlock in tier 2 and 3 cities so i also decided to share some of the facts that it is a very gradual very artisanal very fruitful journey if you want to tap some opportunities in tier 2 and 3 cities for the coffee journey because it is if even in today's date if you want to start a coffee shop so you are strengthening the machinery part where you are procuring the machine from you are doing a lot of experimentation with the recipes 
you are doing lot of experimentation with the coffee beans you are uh, getting source from so it is a whole chain that you are doing work on from the roaster from the farmers from the machinery vendors to the in giving employment to the baristas and then to the end consumer so if somebody want to jump into the business it is one of the most prominent and one of the most fruitful time i, I would say because the wave has just started what we are witnessing in delhi mumbai mumbai bangalore around 5 to 6 years ago the wave has just started in tier 2 and 3 cities and i as i am myself from tier 3 city so you can you you can relate i can relate to other person who want to jump because um it took, it took us a lot of time for example if i say that when i got an idea of introducing a coffee roaster to the vector rajasthan part it took me research work of 2 years to convert that idea that passion into something feasible and now we are working we are sourcing from different farms we are working uh, with different governing bodies we are exhibiting our coffee to different metro cities and states we have successfully uh, shipped our coffee to us and france as well so that is the thing you have to work on you have to be very passionate you have to be relatable you have to be consistent and you have to tap and collaborate with the right people i would also say that even i am very eager that what are the things coffee board and the aic is doing to boost this journey so jump into it make yourself better every day and try to work on every vertical of the coffee production unit from coffee farmers for example i am very always humble and i am very kind and i am very inclined to how hard working is coffee farmers do in their farms to give you the best if i say that we only use hand picked coffee so hand picking is one of the toughest job you because there are no threshers no machinery that can go on such an altitude so the coffee farmers are picking each and every cherry themselves making sure that every coffee uh, cherry is fully ripe and tasted well so that is the hard work so when you are trying to unlock the potential in the coffee journey you should also be aware that what you are jumping into it it is a very very fruitful very beautiful industry in which everyone is helpful to each other so i say that this is the right time to tap the potential this is the right time to work on it and it this is the right time that you can grow very well and do experimentation it is a lifelong journey it is something that you want to be successful you want to get better every day and like from you can be a roaster you can be a home brewer dopio cafe bakery studio cafe you can be everything so this is if somebody want to connect me on that part please feel free now if we can have some questions as well praveen hello am i audible uh for you are audible lekin continue yeah so uh, can we take questions as well if somebody want to ask yeah in, if you are comfortable uh, to questions in between you can do that or else you can uh, take it to the end of the webinar also that is also fine so the participants okay. can uh, post their questions in the chat box yeah okay now um there are few uh, when we were studying and we were researching from our coffee roasters part that uh, how the like there are some cities who are doing really good for example if i say jodhpur to jodhpur is on the verge of converting the coffee from third wave to third wave and from third wave to the start of the fourth wave now it is not just the concept of the coffee it is the concept of a specialty coffee the cities like pali and there may there must be cities in every state that are just entering the coffee chain so before starting anything you have uh, i would like to share with all the coffee entrepreneurs who want uh, to associate that strategize and uh, invest very well ultimately coffee is something coffee is a part of our lifestyle for example if i am drinking coffee i i want to drink coffee every day i want to uh, try something new so be very particular of the best quality you can give at the best price 
there is a coffee chain uh, which is started from Rajasthan. Now they have more than 25 uh, setups, small dupe do coffees. So they particularly sell coffee around 85 to 100 rupees uh, per cappuccino. So somebody asked me that uh, what what are your reviews? What are your reviews on that coffee? So I, as I say that if I have to judge the quality of the coffee, it is very nominal. But if I have to judge at what price they are serving you the coffee, then it is phenomenal. So for coffee entrepreneurs, uh, it is a very good suggestion that whenever you are trying to start your journey, hold your hand with the right people who can guide you because and don't be very aspiring. For example, if I uh, see myself to uh, be the next Starbucks, it will take some time for us. It will take some uh, very hard work, a long journey, a lot, a lot of innovation and everything to reach that part. So when you are working with your passion, you have to be uh, keep in mind that perspective and the time vertical as well that when you are uh, starting something, it will take some time to reach your end goal. So be consistent with the quality of the coffee. And in tier two and three cities, I have noticed that people are more uh, excited about the recipe with which you are working on. So again, that is one of the great vertical you can work on if you want to start something in tier two and three cities, because there are many coffee roasters who are doing really good in mismatching the recipe. Uh, like in, in even in the processing part, for example, one of the most trendy uh, coffee in India, which is going on uh, online platforms like Amazon and everything. This whiskey barrel aged coffee. Now that is when I, I heard about on the first time, I was very much sure that why somebody is doing so much experimentation with the coffee. Let coffee be the just simple, simple coffee. But again, when you are working in Gen Z and Gen X, uh, you have to see that what your end customer want. And now as I see that people are home brewers are more willing to pay a good amount of but uh, good amount of money for a particular coffee in tier two and three cities. When it comes to tier one city, people are more judgmental that what are the coffee they are drinking and uh, and they are very adamant about the brand part. Uh, for example, if somebody is taking from the XY brand, so he stick to that particular brand. He is very much adamant about shifting to some to try something new. That's why I say that tier two and three, the biggest opportunity that you sorry, the biggest opportunity uh, in tier two and three city that you can be experimental. Plus, people are not stick to any particular brand. For if so if you want to have, try them ten different coffees, ten different days, it is very easy. Uh, for you to tell them that you can try this coffee from this farm, this coffee from this farm, this is from this fermentation process and they will be not very adamant. Again to the economics and the commercial part, as you can try this uh, in tier 2 and 3 cities, so it will be bef uh, beneficial from the whole chain. You can understand that, that if a coffee trader is producing a coffee from 3 to 4 different uh, fermentation process like some uh, some farmers are doing fruit fermentation like banana fermented coffee and everything which tastes really good surprisingly so as people are not too much on the konoja side they they love to try something new they love to go to every cafe for example if somebody is going to one cafe at one at one weekend he will be trying some other cafes on the second weekend and that is a good part that is something that it is very much fruitful on the commercial and the economic part that if you are able to start something good with a good storytelling with a good product at the end of the day so you can do great you can do great because it is more of a fronting value now you see if uh, for example if anyone of us who are drinking coffee on a regular basis some anyone of us want to visit some cafe so we will not be paying a huge amount of money for the fancy thing we will be paying the amount for which product we want. But now the people who are staying in tier two and three cities, particularly people who are who have worked in Bangalore, Metro City or maybe out of India and now because of COVID has come back and working from home. So they are very adamant that we want to show off, we want to flaunt, we will be uh, doing the most expensive thing on the menu. We want to try something new every day. That is a good part. That is why we say that the next 
coffee chain will be initiated in tier two and three cities because ultimately at the end of the day it is the commercial and the economic strength of the industry that will have it to boost and this is one of the very good statistics i have uh, gone through in google recently when i was preparing my thing uh, for today that earlier it has it was almost the 95 percent of the coffee which was produced in india was exported now the ratio has dropped down dramatically and the good part is that the farmers who were growing earlier the commercial coffee and not getting the good price for the coffee beans now they are getting an amazing price for the coffee and only about 40 to 35 percent of the coffee which was produced in india is exported now at a very higher price so every part of the coffee production chain is doing really good now it is up to coffee preneurs coffee entrepreneurs who are coming new to the business that how they how they grow it further again a good part a good growth comes with a good responsibility now i am at a state that i can do a number of things but i have sticked to one value that i will be only roasting indian specialty coffee i will be only promoting indian coffee farmers so that is the responsibility i have taken now after i have i have, I have done the roasting part now i feel i have connected with many people some uh, some great people from coffee board AIC and everything and then i get to know that there are so many verticals which i can work on very easily one of the part was uh, skill development training mentoring and everything so you know coffee industry is something that gives you a great leverage of helping others a great leverage of uh, giving employment and strength strengthening the uh, chain from farmer like everybody says that we have to work for the farmers we have to work for the farmers but in the coffee industry it is very easy if you are doing good you can head you can help directly to them so i see that there is a great potential there is a great uh, fruitful journey that people can jump into it they can open a coffee shop they can open a coffee chain and there are many many bodies that are helping funding and everything and with that thing you can take the responsibility and you can give back to the community that is a very easy supply chain in coffee industry if i i, I am doing a great business so i will be more to i will procure more from the coffee farm so they are uh, doing really good i will be very helpful to them directly so that in that particular manner if you have that thing in your mindset that i have to do this industry for my whole lifetime that it is really good i uh, i think pravin now we can take uh, questions if somebody want to have some direct questions what are your views on home brewing yeah participants if you have any questions you can ask directly by unmuting yourself to the speaker or you can also put uh, questions in the chat box there is uh, one person namit who has asked me that what are your views on the home brewing uh, home brewing segment which are coming to tier 2 in cities and uh, in my ppt also i have shared a small segment for the home brewers because now i can see that home brewing is the new trendy thing among the gen z and gen x not only gen z and gen x but uh, among the youth and the people who are brewing coffee at home for example the dalgona was the coffee that everybody must have made during the covid period when there was nothing to do, we were making Dargon at home. <laughs> so again, the homebrew part is a very premium segment, I would say. That if I want to, uh, I want to jump into a homebrewing segment, then I have to um, buy some uh, equipment and then brew at home. The good part is that the homebrewing, uh, the homebrewers are willing to go to the premium segment of the coffee. Uh, you know. Uh, when I say that somebody uh, is a home brewer, so he said that I am just drinking one coffee a day, I am making myself, so I want to go for the best coffee beans you do have. So if I say that this is my brand, this is the best coffee that I am selling, so he is not considered about the price of the coffee. He is considered about the origin, about the processing, about the quality, about the flavor notes. So in that particular manner, it is very helpful for the coffee chain coffee uh, coffee community because we are uh, tapping not only to the market where we will be working on coffee shop and everything that is the market in which we can invest and work more on the specialty sector of the coffee production so yes uh, 
if we say the value addition the home brewers are adding great value to the coffee chain especially the uh, indian producers coffee producers like there are many coffee stand babra stand kera haklu which are doing really great so the home brewers are helping them directly to enhance to boost their coffee value not in the economic terms but on the value addition side hi face this is anup from gb roasters uh, i have a quick question uh, yeah. being in tier 2 cities um what do you think how's the consumption moving from uh, milk based to uh, black coffees yeah that's a nice question because uh, before covid it was very rare for us as well to uh, do the black coffee part now people are not just asking for the black coffee they are even going for the alternative milk options so uh, for tier and uh, if you go to tier 2 cities it is just the change is in the process but if we go to tier 3 city it, it is still a long journey to come and uh, that's why i say that it is a slow procedure of change in tier 2 and 3 city that they will be asking coffee without sugar they will be asking coffee without milk but that is again a good option i see if, um, for example when i started roasting so it is not just that i what i am saying is for the one year or two year market as gradually as, as it is growing so you can be sure that if you are a roaster i am glad that you are a roaster and you are doing great in your city so as you are a roaster you can see that acha market is doing slow now people are jumping from uh, milk based coffee to black coffee now maybe uh, that period will take two or one year after two and three year there will be more opportunities that people will be jumping just from the espresso americano to the aeropress to the pour over to the chemics part so that is a good uh, future we can see on the coffee perspective side i right, thank you this is helpful thank you anyone else want to have uh, some conversation or some questions yes one one another observation uh, and and just would like to this is anup again um yeah now you mentioned about um, the the indian farmers doing very well for themselves in terms of both the quality and uh, getting the the prices for them um but indian consumer is still uh exposed to a very limited um uh, you know the 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 i would say for for the for the in the absence of international coffees uh very limited uh you know exposure to uh international coffees and the qualities of coffees now you you mentioned uh you are you are you are um uh, uh kind of work you would like to work with with uh, indian coffees indian farmers and i'm with you on that they should they should get uh you know their dues for their uh, hard work but in the absence of uh international coffees indian indian uh coffee consumers are not exposed to the the the, the quality parameters and uh you know getting evolved to the next level so it's like a pull and push you know unless you demand quality i'm not sure how quickly the quality will come come through so in, in the absence of competition so what's your view on that I totally agree with you. Uh, like uh, last week, I went to Jaipur, and I uh, attended a session for home brewers part. So most of the home brewers were using Panama Geisha at their home. <laughs> That is again a very pricey coffee. I, 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 I can understand that it is a very pricey coffee, and it is some of the top quality coffee globally. Now the thing is that. this is something i am also working on because for example if i go with the quality part obviously the price of the coffee boost up and if if i am i am uh, giving my coffee beans to some of the particular coffee chains or coffee shops so they are not willing to pay that much amount for a good quality of coffee so again it is the educational responsibility we can uh, take together that uh, we have to make sure that this is the farm from which we are sourcing like there are many farms which are just focusing on the quality part thankful to the blue token and everything that they they have become such a huge market 
then they are able to uh, make uh, processing unit and water saving units in some of the farmers some of the coffee states so yes it is a it is it is a, uh, the same thing which i am facing and it is a long journey i can understand your uh, point on that that it will take around 3 to 4 years again if somebody is drinking panama geisha so he will be or she will be expecting the same quality with the most premium coffee estates in india that that will be a very challenging part because what they are working on they have started working in 90s and 80s on that particular farm and estate and uh, now they are uh, yielding such a good quality of crop so yes it will take some time plus now we are moving from the commercial coffee part like most of the uh, indian specialty coffee estates which i have talked and i am working with so earlier most of the part of their farms work was the commercial coffee part so they were not working on the some origins or some especially fermented coffee some washed coffee or something like that so yeah if we see the quality if we see the knowledge of the end consumer or the differentiation point that what a 1000 rupees coffee and what a 3000 rupees coffee will differentiate so it will come one of the parameter is that for your first question that if somebody want to have a very exact differentiation that uh, how the different coffee tastes he or she has to take a black coffee so two years we can see that two years uh, it will two years time it will take to change from that particular coffee to the black coffee part the that how he gets that a black coffee can give different taste on different coffees and again the pricing point once people are aware of the quality uh, in the comparative part on all together the coffee quality then they will be willing to pay the, a good amount of price until then we have to wait we have to work on and uh, make sure that we can have a good business from our side and we can give good business to the farmer so they can be more experimental with the quality parameters right yeah uh, i i agree with you um the uh if 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 the if the quality is improve i think in the domestic markets what i have seen uh, uh internationally as well uh with the domestic coffees um is that the the coffees domestically as well specialty coffee goes for around uh you know uh, around 7 to 8 dollars uh and um, uh if uh indian market specialty if the specialty market grows the farmers will have better prices currently i think The, those are like around around five five dollars five and a half dollars domestically uh, in the domestic uh, consumer side. Um, hopefully soon we will see uh, them getting the right price for their coffees. But you know somewhere it has to start. Wherein uh, you have to start competing. Actually, you have to start competing. I'm not saying everyone should have geisha every day or the geisha should be introduced. I'm saying the the the, the other origins like you know have Brazilian in. to see because i'm sure uh, indian coffee will taste much better than brazilian you know uh, <laughs> so uh, so yeah. I, i'm uh, have 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 indonesian coffees in have brazilian coffees in have have regular coffees from other destinations in you know allow those coffees uh, to 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 for for our consumers to see uh, that indian coffees are are much better than you know these international coffees of course uh, there are there are then you talk about colombian kenyan etc ethiopian etc but but indian coffee will will, will stand on, on its legs you know once once yeah. the market opens up you know and uh, the consumer will, will then seek uh, more of indian coffees once they realize you know where, where does it stand you know vis-a-vis uh, -vis the international market again uh, i just want to introduce one thing that yes indian coffee has a very different flavor if you go to colombia and it to be in the basic character of the coffee is more of the fruity as well when it comes to indian coffee it is more of nutty flavor and earthy flavor but uh, for example i would share that i uh, i got a conversation with that person in a, who is having a coffee tin in guatemala and so he introduced me with a technique in which he first to 12 hours fermented the coffee with the cherry then washed so i asked one of the coffee farmers that that whether we can do so it's a, it's a great idea we are already aware of this process the double process coffee but again that double process coffee will increase the price tremendously of the coffee beans so if you have a market of that coffee that you can sell uh, that premium coffee in the market then you can do it and then comes the mop so there for example if i say surat and gujarat and the belt of the mumbai 
so they are doing really good with the very premium coffee you know and you you as a you must be aware of the market that they are doing really good because people are very willing to pay the price for a good amount of uh, good uh, quality of coffee so it will take some time when tier 2 and 3 cities will get that commercial part very strong for example I, if i want to do some experimentation with my coffee beans or coffee quality then yes it takes a huge amount of money as well and i don't know whether my end consumer will be willing to pay or not so that's we can work together that how we can uh, and do the quantity but, yeah uh, sorry to interrupt but i think uh, indian consumer is uh, in cities at least already paying uh, international prices uh, you, yeah, you in walk cities into it do in tier 2 and 3 it is little bit that it will take some time that people will be aware of the quality and then they are willing to pay in delhi mumbai i totally agree that they are not very uh, uh, you know uh, they are willing to pay a good amount of money for a good coffee uh, no, the willingness, I don't know, but the, the cafes are charging the same amount as international coffee. So you go for any any manual brews, it's nothing less than 250 rupees. Uh, any co coffees, it's it's more than 200 rupees, uh, you know, which is uh, close to international prices almost. Exactly, exactly. Like in Jodhpur, in my city, I am the only person, I am the only coffee shop owner who is uh, uh, providing an option of pour over or aeropress. And I get only one or two orders in a, in a month. So I see that yeah, the market has to be developed in an educative manner that in tier and two, three cities also people are willing to pay a good amount of money because ultimately if I'm uh, taking a bag or two or three or four for any particular coffee. So I need my customer also. There has to be some customer pool also from which I can invest more. Correct. That's what I do as well in the cafe. Uh, you know, it's. <laughs> It's an educative process. So someone asked me for uh, Americano. I, I asked them, would they want to try, uh, you know, the manual brew because it would be much sweeter than Americano. So that's how I'm educating. And, you know, the, the, the consumers are appreciating those things. I think it's a long drawn process, as you mentioned earlier. But that has to be a very optimistic part that we can see that for the next five or six years. And that is for everyone else that if I see that people are jumping from black coffee to uh, sorry, milk based coffee to black coffee. So I can see that the market is evolving for the next two years. Now, if uh, from black coffee to manual brewing and there are so many new manual brewing equipment that are coming into the market. So I can see that in tier two, three, uh, three, uh, two and three cities, the market is on a evolving much for the next five and six years. So on that part, I'm very optimistic, yes, if we are doing good, if we are uh, trying and improvising uh, our values, our practices, operations, everything, every day. So yeah, for the next uh, five to 10 years, it is a very good growth rate in which we, we can work on. Right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more questions from the participants? So we have shared the contact details of uh, Mr. Faiz uh, in the chat box. So you can reach out to him directly if you have any queries or any concerns. So we'll be definitely able to help you out. And also we have shared the feedback form in the chat box. So feel free to fill that. So we'd like to know like uh, which topic you want to have for the next webinar and how was today's webinar. We would just like to know that. And definitely this feedback will be shared with the speaker as well. And uh, please visit our official website uh, where we are going to update about our upcoming programs, uh, activities and events. So I thank everyone uh, for uh, attending today's uh, webinar, uh, which uh, clearly gave you insight about the uh, potential of tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, exclusively uh, enhancing the growth of the coffee industry in India. And I also thank uh, Mr. Faiz Mohammed for taking his time uh, and uh, delivering this uh, wonderful uh, uh, session. In fact, he was part of our uh, uh, startup conclave in uh, World Coffee Conference. Uh, even uh, many uh, participants who attended those conference also uh, yeah, appreciated the uh, the different topic that everybody were waiting for because it's easy to get details about the uh, uh, industry perspective from metro cities but tier two tier three cities there are a lot of 
budding entrepreneurs coming emerging from these cities and towns so it is really uh, uh, good to have a topic on this and i appreciate uh, uh, mr faiz mohammed for taking his time and giving the insight and the twin non coffee growing region uh, like rajasthan north india <laughs> so there's a lot of potential means so definitely uh, all other uh, parts of india uh, we can uh, uh, enter right so the um, culture of uh, uh, coffee that uh, we need to inculcate in other parts of the country and make sure that the domestic consumption increases not just uh, exporting the coffee from india and to uh, make sure that the domestic consumption also increases so that the more and more uh, 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 what you can say employment can be generated in this try to try to cities and the uh, uh, migration of people in search of job to metro cities to be uh, can be avoided to some extent right <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so much i i really appreciate the work you are you people are doing to boost the coffee community and also would like to share that uh, in past three months there were a coffee roaster in himachal there is a coffee roaster okay. which has come in sikkim so the thing is that the coffee industry is growing and people are doing really good is just that we have to connect to each other we have to hand over each other so that we can help each other and strengthen the community for the consumer as well as for the people of the community who are growing coffee roasting and doing everything and it is not just about the roasters or the coffee part we can do a lot of stuff so feel free if anybody want to connect if i i am also willing to take any input from anyone who who want to suggest me something who want to give input who want to add some value to me my thing coffee community and anything so just feel free to connect thank you yes yes thank you mr faiz and one more thing the participants we are onboarding mr faiz as one of our official mentor for the incubation center also so there are a lot of uh, startups who are looking for mentorship from the industry people so uh, we are happy to onboard uh, mr faiz as our official mentor for the uh, incubation program where he can support the uh, emerging startups uh, through his uh, knowledge and industry insights as mr praveen has said that rajasthan is a not a coffee growing <laughs> state i agree with the fact but one thing i would share that if you are working with good farmers if you are working good like i have i started my operation as a coffee roaster in january and till mm. now i have uh, shipped to 55 different cities and 18 different states of india my coffee so it is a thing if i can do every one of you can do to be very honest i am not in the capital of uh, the state i am in a tier 2 city which is a very small town like if i compare to bangalore or mumbai it is like one tenth of the metro city part but i have successfully uh, delivered to 55 cities and by god grace and working on a good quality um, um all of the all our customers loved our coffee there was zero negligence negligence zero returns on our coffee so if i can do anybody of you can do it's just that you have to work with good partners follow your passion and work really hard Yes, yes, completely agree with you, uh, Mr. Faiz. Thank you again uh, for thank you, thank uh, uh, you. being here. And uh, participants, uh, we have already shared the details in the chat box. So, if you need any further assistance related to uh, any of your business ideas related to coffee, so you can uh, get in touch with me. So, my contact details are also shared here. Okay. Once again, thank you. Like, uh, uh, please uh, follow our social media account so you'll get to know about the details of the upcoming webinar. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Faiz.